Okay. Now I gotta get to my question. Which I've lost. Okay. All right, so basically, I'm gonna kinda get you started talking, but you can talk about whatever you want. Okay. As long as it's related to <laughs> the 10th Mountain Division. Yes. <laughs> Not about your dog. Vicki, and you need name and unit number. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll do that in just a second. So I'll just ask you a couple of things to get started, and, and then Away we go. take it wherever you want to. Okay, so this is August 5th. I'm Vicki Johnson. I'm at the 10th Mountain Division Reunion in Denver, and I'm interviewing. Don Dwyer, D-W-Y-E-I. And what unit were you in? 87th Company F, 2nd Battalion, Company F. And what were your dates of service? 1943 to 1946. Okay. And what were you doing before you entered the service? I was in ROTC in college, and we accelerated uh, for two years. And uh, upon graduation, we went to uh, Georgia to Fort Benning for officer's training school. And then from there, uh, we went to Colorado. So That's in a short, yeah. You arrived in Colorado when? Well, it, I, I've got to tell you this, that, that down in uh, uh, Georgia, it was so hot and sticky down there, and the clay, the red clay, three of us didn't care for this. There was a notice on the board that they were looking for officers for the 10th Mountain Division in Colorado. So you should never volunteer, but we did. And three of us volunteered, and we were accepted. And the specific month was maybe February of 40, 45, probably. 45, yeah, right. Okay, so you volunteered and you ended up from... Well, we had a very interesting, if, it, if I could go on, uh, we had a very interesting ride, a train ride out there uh, on the way to Denver. And it was some, we took the train out and there were some lovely ladies uh, on the train, and we were held up in Omaha with a, with a flood. And we got talking to these gals, and one happened to be Glenn Miller's sister. And if you remember Glenn Miller, of course, and uh, uh, she had just come from seeing her brother uh, off from New York City. From, that was an interesting sidelight. And we arrived in Denver, and uh, went to Camp Hale from there. And arrived in snow up to you know where, and uh, I reported in at that time. And, and if you want me to continue there, sure. that uh, uh, I reported into Colonel Emmett Nations at the 2nd Battalion, and his instructions to me were make sure you, you get acclimated, stay on the ground for at least one week. And, uh, and I said, yes, sir. And I left, I picked up my footlocker, went out, walked up the stairs up to, to the uh, barracks, and immediately had a bloody nose. <laughs> so. Did you know how to ski before you came? Vaguely. Uh, I wasn't much of a skier, but uh, uh, I had skied. I had skied, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you want to talk about the training the, at, the, at Camp Hale? The training at Camp Hale was how to, how to handle yourself and the men in, in cold weather, uh, high altitudes, uh, in snow, uh, climbing mountains and so forth. And uh, we had, uh, we had, we culminated our training there with, uh, you probably heard it, the, the famous D-series, D-series, 
where they tested an old expression, men and material. And we were tested. And it was the 35 below zero. We were to stay out there for one month. It was at 35 below zero. And to test all sorts of clothing uh, and tents and so forth. And I will never forget that first night. I was so cold. And uh, we put 100 people in the hospital that first night at 35 below. And a good friend of mine, he, he was killed in the war, Jack Benson. And he was a mountaineer. And my name was, I used Mike in those days, Mike Dwyer. And he said, Mike, I didn't want to take my clothes off. And he says, Mike, you've got to. You've got to take your clothes off when you get in this little pup tent. And, uh, and I did, fortunately. He said, take your, your, your blouse, your, your shirt off, and your boots, and put everything under your knees. And, um, and we had in our equipment some warm clothes, or warm underwear, and that will that'll take you through tonight. And he actually probably saved my life that, that night. By, I had a good sleep, woke up in the morning, and the frost all came down on my, my face and so forth. But uh, that was quite an experience. A sidelight to that, a sidelight to that, uh, Francis Sargent was the governor of Massachusetts a few years ago. And he was also a 10th Mountain man. And on occasion during business, uh, we, we met, met at a meeting. And this particular day, he was up in the dais to give a talk. So I walked around the, in the back and get up, and I tapped him on the shoulder. And he looked at me, and other people were. And I said, Governor, would you be rather giving a speech or be in D series? Donald, he says. He jumped up. He says, Donald, will you ever, ever forget the D series? Wasn't that something? And these, all these people looked at me. Who the devil is this guy talking to the governor like that and getting so excited? But it was just a, a, a sidelight. And uh, that Francis Sargent was, was a good 10th mountain man. Yeah, a D series, yeah. So would you say the Divi Series was your most memorable event at Camp Hill, or do you have others? No, that was the most memorable uh, event. We went from there, of course, down to uh, flatland training, down to uh, uh, Texas. With the, uh, and here we are with heavy woolens, and they felt that we needed uh, flatland training. Why they said that, I don't know. But anyway, we went down to... Uh, uh, to, to Texas and to Camp uh, Swift and uh, near Austin, Texas. And we used to get down there. And the first time we got there, we were doing, in our heavy equipment, nine miles in two hours. They had us go nine miles in, in two hours. And here again, we put a lot of people in the, in the, uh, the hospital. And eventually from there, we went to... Uh, Virginia and uh, on the USS West Point and went over to Italy. But it was, uh, it was, uh, that, that was an interesting interlude uh, down, in, uh, down in Texas. And Go ahead. Well, we, we landed over there in, in, uh, around Pisa and uh, uh, we, there wasn't much, actually there wasn't much snow in Italy, <clears throat> and we did an awful lot of patrol work, and, the, and we lived with some, the partisans over there. And our first, uh, I did a lot of patrol patrols, uh, armed patrols there. Our first taste of combat was at Mount Belvedere, and uh, Mount Belvedere, uh, uh, controlled uh, the valley that we were in, and the Germans controlled Mount Vel Belvedere. And before we could advance, we had to uh, take Mount Belvedere. And that was my first baptism of fire at, at Mount Belvedere. And uh, uh, that was quite an experience uh, there. 
and uh, we were shelled an awful lot, and uh, uh, and then we went from there up the Apennines, up to the Po River, uh, and across the Po River, and uh, that that type of thing. Uh, the can I use my hands here for a minute? Uh, <clears throat> the incident I had that I don't know if you would be interested in this at all, but I have here a souvenir of mine. I have a lieutenant's bar. I have the regular bar. And I had this I had this particular bar on my neck here. And apparently a sniper had me in his target. And he fired and the bullet hit this bar and it saved my life. It ricocheted and it hit me in the neck. But it had a glancing blow and you can see the the rifling of the bullet here on this particular bar. And it sent me, I was leaning over a, a trench with some men in it, talking to them, and the next thing I know, I landed in the trench. And I reached up, and he says, you've been hit, there's blood. But it, it didn't, it was on my, if it, a quarter of an inch more to hit my carotid artery. So I was quite proud to, of, of that, but uh, thank God it wasn't my, it wasn't my turn, that's all. I don't know if you can get a picture of that, I even want a picture of it, but. Uh. Hold it up. Normal, that's a normal uh, lieutenant's bar. And this is the bar that a sniper uh, his, the slug hit me and uh, and ricocheted off my neck, uh, ricocheted off, off the bar, hit my neck, drew blood, and uh, this saved my life, though. Absolutely. So. So were you wounded any other times? Or was that your closest? That was my closest. That was enough. That was That was my closest. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, then we went across the Po River, the Po River, and uh, this was toward the end of the war now. This was toward the end of the war. And uh, 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 Jim Kennett was our captain. And Jim, at one particular point, in a little village we're in, he took a bicycle ride on a bike with another fellow. And he happened to, there were some Germans in a hedgerow, and they shot and killed him. And I took over the company at that point. And, uh, and until uh, a captain was appointed. Uh, and then we went from there. Well, the war ended. The war ended for us up in the uh, up at that point. I think it was April nineteenth, uh, in forty six, and uh, we went back down to uh, uh, Florence. And I had an interesting assignment there. Uh, the company I was with the company, but I was selected to come home on the on an advance party to set up. Camp uh, Carson for our battalion with their bedding and, and uh, uh, things like that and, and all the utensils uh, <clears throat> prior to on our way to Japan. But uh, the war ended uh, before we did that. But uh, that, that flight, you might be interested in the flight home. I left Florence and we, I flew home on a B-17 with some other fellows like myself who were on special assignment. And we went down to South America and Africa, took the southern route and flew back up into, into uh, 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 Florida. But uh, uh, 
on the, we were so tired from, from when we got on that plane, and we had this bucket, just bucket seats. And when the plane took off, on the, on the plane, the back of a plane, as you probably know, slants just a bit toward the tail. You know, when you walk in, you walk up. And with the fl floor of the plane, uh, we all, some of us got down there and fell asleep. And we were so tired. Next thing I know, the, the pilot is coming back. One of the pilot come back. Will you guys get off this? Because it was making the, the plane mush. In other words, we were dropping the tail. They couldn't level the plane, okay, because we were weighting it down so much. And he, so they forced us to uh, go back into our bucket seats. But, uh, but then uh, we, landed in, we landed in Florida, and I'll never forget. I, had a, I went right to the PX and had a frap and a, and a, and a cheeseburger. It was so nice to, to, to uh, be there. And then uh, from there, uh, I went out to uh, Camp Carson, and I reported to a German sergeant. He was the most intelligent guy, and, and he, he, uh, he opened all the warehouses for us uh, to get uh, bedding and, and so forth. But the war was over. So uh, I went home on a, on a leave, and then uh, the 10th Mountain was broken up during that period of time. So we didn't have to go to Japan after all. But we were assigned uh, to uh, the 2nd Infantry Division in, in, down in uh, Texas. And we went down there. And uh, Sid Peterman, who was my company commander way back in, at Camp Hale at one time, was now the battalion commander down there, and I was I was his uh, S3 plans plans and training officer. But and from there, from there, uh, uh, I went to Fort Devens for discharge. So that's the story of my war days. What did you do after the war? Um, after the war, I went to work for uh, the New England Electric System back in New England and uh, as, a, as a student engineer assigned to various companies in New England uh, to learn that business. And then from there, I went to New England Gas and Electric, which is another uh, utility association up in Massachusetts, and retired from there after uh, 50, 40 years, yeah, 36 years actually, yeah. How do you think your 10th Mountain Divisions affected the rest of your life? I think that the, the friends that I knew in the 10th Mountain Division, it was a very close group because of, let's say, the training uh, the people we lost, uh, some of those fellows, uh, you know, you get to be very close with, with uh, many of those people. And this particular uh, grouping out here, it's so good to see some of them again, you know, all of them, but especially those in Company F uh, start to reminisce. At, uh, it's, it, it gave me... Uh, it showed what dedication will do, what training will do, and the sacrifice, sacrifice vices you make. Uh, but it was worth the effort, really. But there's nothing like being prepared, whether it's in the service or in business or what you're doing. You've got to be prepared. You've got to have some training uh, to fully accomplish what you're trying to do. And I think the uh, 10th Mountain served that purpose uh, for me too, yes. Preparation. Yeah. You, you have a list of things you've written down. What other stories do you want to tell for the tape, either Camp Hale or in Italy or whatever? Those, those are basically the, the, the highlights. Uh, 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 I, 
I, d I don't have any particular uh, long stories uh, uh, or anything. Those were the, certainly the, the highlights that D series. We'll, we'll never forget it. The fact that I got wounded with, with this w was, was a highlight and, and escaped with uh, with my life. And uh, uh, there was there was one when we, we uh, when we came over on the West uh, West Point. It was I think it was the, the America, and it came over. When we left uh, uh, Virginia, and we came over without any escort, because the West Point, uh, the America, uh, was a uh, uh, ship that took passengers, you know, uh, normally. And they had the whole division on, on that ship. And because F Company in our regiment was the center company of the whole thing, we were designated as the uh, uh, with for all the colors, all the flags of of the division, and th we also had uh, assignments uh, while we were over there to uh, police the different alleyways and protect the alleyways for the nurses and uh, uh, you know people like that. And subsequently, rather than live uh, way in the bowels of the ship, we could sleep in the staterooms up above. Now those staterooms. Account normally had two people. Well, we have to have 12 people in a stateroom with the bunks uh, laid out. But it was, uh, you could, uh, we, had, we had a very interesting Dartega's All Girl Band. I'll never forget Dartega's All Girl Band. It was a USO outfit, and we had to protect them. And uh, uh, we struck up some vin via interesting acquaintances with those young ladies. And uh, we said goodbye, and then we had a rest and, and uh, a relaxation in Florence, Italy, eventually. And who was in Florence at, at that time performing at a theater but the Dartega's all-girl band? So two of us went and knocked on the, on the door, and we said, my sisters, in, in the band, could I see her? Oh, sure, sure, so. So we went back and, and renewed old acquaintances, and, and then uh, we went around in front and we, we sat with the regular audience and pretty soon the, 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 we heard this music on, on the stage and the curtain slowly opened and here's 40 beautiful young ladies all in white playing da, 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 Glenn Miller's theme song and you should hear those GIs. They stood up and applauded like mad. But these beautiful gals, they could really play. And uh, uh, it, it was quite, that was quite a night. It was quite a night. And then we went out with them after uh, with some of them. But uh, it, was, it was a very pleasant uh, thing, really, really. So when you got to Italy, did you think you would survive? Did you think you would last through the war? I, I was hoping so. I didn't dwell on it. I, I didn't dwell on it. I used to uh, uh, volunteer for many patrols, uh, combat patrols, and I had a friend uh, uh, in the next company, Company E, Jack Doherty, who's no longer with us, but uh, Jack and I used to pal around. We went from college together, same jobs, in the, and when we went to OCS, and he went to E Company with the 10th Mountain, and I went to F Company. So at the end of the war, uh, we, we, we took a Jeep and drove all over northern Italy and, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, enjoyed that. But many times when I was out on patrol, Jack used to come and when I came back, be there to, to uh, receive me, uh, uh, but uh, we just had some interesting uh, patrols, that's all, because that, that's stealth type stuff. But I, never, I didn't worry, I didn't think. For some reason I thought they, I wasn't gonna get hit ever, or else I, I would've, I would've probably wouldn't have done half of that stuff. Any experience with surrendering Germans? 
Pardon? Any experience with surrendering Germans? No, I, I don't. Uh, I, I, as, as, as we moved up, as we moved up, uh, you know, we, we saw uh, many of them, and it seemed to me they looked quite relieved uh, because we were, in those days, uh, uh, the Air Force bombing the hell, heck out of them. And, and uh, uh, one of the, the scariest things I had was the Germans 88. They had a gun 88. And that thing, they used to fire that, and they would probably not shoot it up but at straight. And we were in a lot of the woods. The shell would hit trees and scatter, and, and it, had, it was a screaming, screaming uh, sound. And uh, none of us like that, right, right. So. Is that the end of the tape? Pardon? It's 10.15. Yes. So if you have anything else you want to put on the tape? No, I, I think if, if that, that goes through what I would consider okay. from college right on, yeah. All right.